Dinner in 30 minutes. Oh, count me out. I gotta go to a magician's meeting. Since when are you a magician? I took it up today. And I'm having dinner, Debbie's. Hey, now wait. Hey, hey, you guys. Your father finally drops in for a meal, and now all of a sudden you're splitting somewhere. You know how long it's been since we've sat down and eaten a meal together? I don't know why I'm asking you. You didn't even have tea. Oh, oh, I'm I'm gonna gonna go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. If it can't be tonight, it's going to be tomorrow night. We are all going to sit in that dining room together as a family and eat only. A certificate of death, a recent one, will be an excuse for a no-show. After school, I was going to practice my semaphore signals with Debbie and then go to the library. And I got a game to lose. I've got a five o'clock dental appointment tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Dinner. Together. Well, if we're not finished loving one another by 6.30, I'm going to split. Now that we're all here together, let's talk. Let's, let's share our day. That should be an enriching experience. Guess what seven words Ramsey, Ramsey Phillips says you can't use on TV? <laughs> not that enriching, sweetheart. <laughs> Dear, what would you like to talk about? Why don't you kids want your father to have a lawn? I mean, how do you expect that lawn to cope? Bikes, skates, football games. Steven, take that out of here and listen to your father. I know the lawn speech. It runs two minutes and 40 seconds. Very funny, but the fact remains that no one lifts a finger to help. I mean, you can run across it, you can tear it to bits, you can break its will to live. But does anybody contribute to its compost? No. I mean, maybe I should donate the front yard to the government for nuclear testing. <laughs> Debbie, dear, wouldn't you be more comfortable waiting in the living room for Kelly? She'll be with you as soon as she's finished with this family feast. Well, okay. But when our semaphore signals are sloppy, don't anybody blame me. Dad? <clears throat> Every kid in the neighborhood has a 10-speed bike but me. My skateboard's put down the middle. Oh, 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 yeah. What am I, some kind of Santa Claus? Do you know how much money I got as a kid? 25, 25 cents a week. 25 cents a week. 25 cents a week. You know what I had to buy with that 25 cents a week? You, you had, had to buy your books, clothes, clothes tuition, tuition, medical, medical expenses, expenses, and pay for your own entertainment. And pay for your own entertainment. And I buy all my own books, clothes, medical expenses, pay my own rent and entertainment. And you know how old I was when I got my first car? 23, 23 years, years old. old. 23 years old. And you know who got me my you first did. car? You did. You did. I, got, I know a good joke. Can I go now? No. You just sit right there and let your little brother tell his joke. Okay. Now, what's yellow, of course? And, and, um, and has four legs and weighs 400 pounds. <laughs> and, uh, and... And, and it goes with, with, peep, peep. You've got it all mixed up. How do you know? You never heard the joke. Stephen, would you let him tell it his way? Okay. Now, go ahead, sweetheart. It's wonderful so far. Finish it. That's all. Now you're supposed to guess. Give up? Yeah. A 400-pound canary. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get it? Isn't it two 200-pound canaries? Well, what's the difference? One 400-pounder and two 200-pounders. No, 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 no difference. It's just that uh, that's the way I heard it, that's all. Well, if you heard it before, you should have stopped me. It's not my turn to do the dishes. I think I better go practice my semaphore signals with Debbie. I'll be right with you, Debbie. Just gotta get my flags. 
I hope there's an afterlife. An afterlife? Life after the kids are grown. He'll be fine. We just can't give him water for a year. Really? Mom, you forgot to catch my sleeping bag, and I've got a camping trip tomorrow night. I didn't forget. I'll do it in the morning. What time is it? 7.30. It doesn't look like dinner's even started yet. I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> you know, I really must teach you guys how to turn the oven on sometime. Jim, you're going to have to take the kids out for a hamburger. I've just got time to make my class. Oh, that thing is that thing. Loony mommy's loony little things. I make fun of you because you like to sleep on the cold ground all zipped up to your nose. Mom, when you come back, will you help me with my Halloween costume? Oh, well, honey, it'll be a little late for that, but don't worry. We still have time to make your pirate suit. I decided to be an iguana instead. Well, that might take a little longer. Mom, can you drive me to Debbie's house? Kelly, I don't have time tonight. Mommy's limousine service is closed. Daddy's gonna have to drive you. Dot, why break your back dashing off to Piedmont High when they've got writing classes right down here on the mall? They're in the afternoon when you wouldn't be turning everybody's life upside down? Jim, that is a poetry class taught by a strange old lady with three names and 17 parakeets. My teacher is a published author. He's already had two plays produced. Okay, okay. It just seems to me that if you're really serious about this writing, you, you might try to get organized to the point where you might have dinner ready before you go rushing off. But could I help it if Arlo got sick? Now, is it too much to ask you to take the kids out for a hamburger for one night? No. No, I've only taken on two new accounts today to try to keep our heads above water, so why not take on some of your domestic chores while you go trotting off to school like some teenager? Keep our heads above water. Do you have any idea what it costs to live in this house? Insurance, taxes, car payments. And when are we going to get rid of those 99,000 boxes of moldy cookies you foisted on me? Foist? You use the word foist on me? You the great foister? You foist. A ten-ton truck on me when all I wanted was a spiffy little sports car. You foist a dog on me that was more trouble to potty train than all three kids put together. And you foist fertilizer on me every time my back is turned. Now we've got a vet, Bill. How did he get a sponge? I chopped it up and fed it to him in his kibble. Well, somebody ought to keep an eye on that dog. Well, you keep an eye on him. Or you, or you. Because I've got a hot flash for every one of you. This hired hand is resigning. Now, I am going to that class for two lovely hours. And I'm sure you'll all starve to death before I get back because none of you will be able to figure out how to open up the refrigerator. And if you want to save more money, why don't you try buying a little less manure? Yeah, I, I think I finally figured those th through ways out. I got it. Yeah? Someone here to see you. Mr. Benson? Yes. Frank Loring, County Building Inspector, Sewage and Drainage. 
I'm afraid you got the wrong septic tank out there. I didn't know I had a choice. <laughs> Actually, you don't. You see, according to this, you've got a 621B. Now, that's not up to code, and we'll have to change it. Change it? Yes. We'll have a man out here dig up your lawn first thing in the morning, okay? Have a nice day. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a minute. Wait, wait a minute. They can't dig up our lawn, can they? What's going to happen to my maple tree? I spent an hour this morning. All right, everybody, take food. it easy. Nobody's going to come in here, make an announcement like that, and walk out of here. I would take this to court if I had to. Nobody's going to come here and dig up this lawn. I could have sworn that septic tank was in the front yard.